Hey folks, how's it going? Checking out more of the Vicar Dibbly. Hope you guys had a fantastic day, man. All right, man. The last episode was like ten years later after the previous uh, season we watched, and she had a bunch of kids, dude. I can't I didn't count how many it was. I don't know, what, like six or seven or something. Or maybe they said a number, and I just wasn't paying close enough attention. But they had a bunch of kids. They were playing games. God bless them. Yeah, I kind of forgot what else was going on. What else happened in that episode, dude? It's kind of slipping my mind right now. Besides Alice, oh, there's. <laughs> You remember Alice like redecorating the entire living room and stuff, making it look goofy and pink and terrible. I'm pretty sure she's gonna change their back, right? There's no way he's gonna let them keep it that way since he signed the house over to him. Like he signed it over to him, but just like he said as a tax dodge. I don't think he's gonna let him keep it that way. And then her getting the painting at the end, I'm pretty sure he's gonna find a way to get that back. I wonder if he's gonna buy her a car to get that paint back. Cause like, wait, it was worth like hundred and twenty thousand dollars? That's crazy. It's an expensive yeah, he's not gonna let her keep that. There's there's no freaking way. Uh, that's what he gets for being cheap, trying to get her a Bible. He could have got it. Well, he came later with the goofy deer, but they had already got her a bigger one. You know, you know, cheapskate. They said his father tax, so they can save money. But still, yeah, that's what he gets for being cheap. I don't know. I don't think he's going to keep that like pain. He's going to find a way to get it back. Because that's the one thing he wanted to keep up in the room, or he told me they had to keep up. Uh, you know what? That was a stipulation. He made that stipulation, so maybe he is going to let them keep it pink. But yeah, man, I did enjoy the first episode. I thought it was a good start to the series. So let's just go ahead and jump into it, man. We'll talk about it more at the end. All right. Quick, but cute. Goody gumdrops. I love your joke. Right. Now concentrate. Okay. Okay. A horse Oops. walks into a bar. Mm -hmm. And the barman says... Let's start off with a joke. Hey, why the long face? Different. <laughs> yeah, this joke. I this joke when I was a kid. Why the long face? Did you get it? Well, I mean, he's obviously lonely. Who knows? Maybe he's got a drink problem as well. <laughs> Why do I always make this mistake? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I interrupted. You were going to tell me. Why does the horse have a long face? Because he's a horse. <laughs> yes, because he's a horse. <laughs> you agree with him? If you were a horse, you'd have a long face. Yes, because I was a horse. I wish I was. No, what? A great, big, vicious Doberman dog. <laughs> Why? Because then I could rip your throat out. <laughs> oh, that is depression too. <laughs> so annoying. Moving on. Yes. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Oh. I've been working on a life-size, cut-out, 3D, do-it-yourself, vibrating model of Justin Timberlake. Oh, no. Yeah, just got to the trouser section. <laughs> Completely forgot it was Wednesday. Well, I'm afraid the job with the Archbishop of Canterbury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Actually, I'm fine about it. You know, see la vie, that's the way the cookie crumbles. He simply decided to give the job to a much younger total twatting talentless tossing tool you don't look anything like freddie mercury i do when i dye my moustache no 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 you bloody well don't <laughs> you dye your moustache you look like stalin <laughs> as i was trying to say before i was interrupted by three you know for once in our lives we all stood together and and said that People are starving and we're mad as hell about it. Yes, I remember. I was mad as hell that day. Good on you, Jim. Yes. My television remote wouldn't work. About poverty once and for all. I don't think she cares about poverty very much. <laughs> what do you mean, she? Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher isn't the Prime Minister. Isn't she? Minister. I'm in a state of shock. Who is it then? It's Tony Blair. <laughs> They're like, who? Nope, doesn't ring a bell. Oh. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Tony Blair, he's been the Prime Minister for the last seven years. What's he done? Oh, there's nothing to worry about being 50. <laughs> Some of my most exciting sexual journeys have been. <laughs> Sexual Through journeys. the caverns and over the hills of women of a certain age. <laughs> I had no idea you were 50. I'm not 50! <laughs> How so old are you then? Well, I'm going to be, you know. And I would hate to have to use them on anyone who mentions it again. So we won't be having a birthday party then. <laughs> 
you a player, bro. No, I suppose for actual old people, uh, 161 is very old. Mm. Right. But for young people, 28 is pretty old. So 30 is very old. Mm. 35. It's hard to imagine anyone that old. Is it? God bless her. Shit all over her. And 40 is. I honestly don't know why they bother. <laughs> I think the kindest thing Cold to do blooded. to women who reach 40 is just put them down. <sighs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> what you gonna die? No. 40 is great, all right? That's the right age for me, and I feel very happy and proud. Yeah. <laughs> What's next, Doctor? No, 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 no. I just say it. No. I feel very young and fit. I mean, look, I can jump, and I can dance. Did you know that I can touch my toes? No. Oh, yes, I can. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Phew. Where's the party, then? There isn't going to be a cooking party! <laughs> Oh, right. Virgin. Touched for the first time. Yeah, we're not restaging it, Alice, OK? We're just commemorating oh. it. You know, the one thing I never did find out about Live Aid, though, was... Did they actually know it was Christmas? Being more annoying than, like, I don't know, being starving to death and some famous pop star comes up to you and you are so excited that you're going to get a handout. And he comes right up to you and he says... Do you know it's Christmas time, Tom? <laughs> this there, right at the Jaffa Gates. <laughs> so, have you all had a go at your letters to the PM? Yes, we've certainly all had a stab. Excellent. Fire away then, Frank. Dear Prime Minister, I'm very sorry that must be on your mind. From the state of the National Health Service to the permanent worry over which tie to wear on big occasions. Yes, I think you might be losing him a bit now, Frank. I remember. Park figure, exactly how long is this letter? 118 pages. Uh, I think you learned how to keep it short. At the last episode. It's not finished yet. Right, and thus far, have you mentioned Africa or poverty yet? No, not yet. Right, well, perhaps when you do, you could let us know. Listen up, you stupid prick. <laughs> <laughs> Smell a tiny problem there. Yes, well, I thought he must get a lot of letters and I should grab his attention right from the beginning. Yeah, good oh, point. Yeah. I think that might be a little bit counterproductive, but let's see how we continue. I can't say I gave it a lot of time, <laughs> but you think fundamentally it's along the right lines. Yeah, no, not really. You see, the main point of writing this letter is for you to tell the Prime Minister that 30,000 people are dying of extreme poverty every day. What did you do? <laughs> I was right on boxes, man. Dear Tony Blair, or Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Delete as applicable. Just dear Tony Blair. Dear Tony Blair. No, 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 no. No more children dying. When we do actually know, know, know how to save their lives. Well, that's straight to the point. Your sincerely, Jim Trot. Well, yeah. that's pretty much it, actually, Jim. Yeah. It's a bit brief, but that is the long and short of it. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Hello, grumpy old grandpa, billiard ball head. <laughs> Hello, Alice. Look, we seriously do have to do something about Geraldine's birthday. She said we should ignore it. I know, but if we do ignore it, it'll only be worse. It's like, um... Sometimes I wish I was dead. <laughs> I thought we should hold a meeting, you know, just to sort things out. I can't believe you keep delivering I like that. Yeah. When? No. <laughs> no, you're right. I'm sure right, he's going to make them change it back. 40's fine, isn't it? Wonderful children and all the benefits that come from a multi million pound business. Yeah, all right. 
Shut it, you great wit. He made that film about Jesus. Oh, The Passion of the Christ. Th that film made me very angry. Oh, me too. An 18 certificate film with the word passion in the title and not one scene of gratuitous sex. <laughs> I've complained to trading standards. So Come in and be surrounded by loving friends? Not really. Oh, no. Come on. Now, isn't a very good idea, so well, goofy. I thought maybe some sort of cream. Oh, yes, yes. That sounds very fruity. I mean, more the sort of anti-aging cream. That one you see on Terrible, television. Yes. Removes all seven signs of aging. That is a yeah. very good idea. We'll definitely get old. some of that. Bravo, Frank. What are the seven signs of aging, then? A uh, good question. They never tell you on the ads. Well, it's lost, I suppose. Nice one, Owen. And breast sag? Oh, don't tell me. How many is that? That's four. Three to go. What about arse sag? Five. <laughs> Senility? Sorry, where was I? Senility <laughs> six. What about seven? Damn. Oh, got it. Oh, what, Jim? Actually dying. <laughs> That's definitely a sign of ageing. Seven! That is it! Well done, everyone! <laughs> Must be one hell of a cream. Yeah, like a, I was like, I'm gonna do all those things. Wait a minute, I've had a brilliant idea. Big goofy oh, asses. Dear. No, 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 I know it's not very likely because I've had some bad ones before. The time machine made out of Weetabix. <laughs> Someone to give her a good scene to once in a while, but the rest of the time to be a, a soulmate and a companion through the stormy and irrational seas of modern day life. Exactly. <laughs> and how do we get a boyfriend these days? Uh, blow, 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 blow jobs, I've heard. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, my God. By dating. This is like a trip. But not like dating in our day, but speed dating. <laughs> it's where, like, um, 30 really attractive men and 30 really stunning Man. single girls. Blow. Maybe Look not. <laughs> Oh no, maybe what do you not. Think? <clears throat> what, suck it on cow well, titties? at first I was angry because I did say no presents, didn't yes, I? Yeah. Well, we, we <laughs> but on forethought, can't deny it, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Bring on the boys. <laughs> the baby in black is back. <laughs> Every day, everyone in this village dead. You're not telling me that's a bad thing. <laughs> Wait, taken, but... Owen dead. Jim dead. My daughter-in-law tragically struck down. <laughs> grandchild was dying, God forbid. Or abandoned and alone. Wouldn't you love to think that someone, somewhere that you didn't even know, was really sticking up for them? Yes, that would be nice. But not very nice if they couldn't make a difference. Yeah, but maybe we can. So... Where'd you keep the heavenly hunks? Oh, well, we keep them separate in another room. Don't want people getting too frisky beforehand. <laughs> oh, right. They get frisky, do they? <laughs> Great! <laughs> they do you mind up. if I say something a little bit personal? Oh, what? Too many donuts, isn't it? No, I know. No, no. Maybe. But your normal chap might see it as a bit of a stop sign. You are so right about that. Um, well, I'll just take it off. Just absolutely take it off. Like that. There. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Doesn't look too brazen. Don't want to appear to be some kind of cheap, easy lay or anything. No, no, it's absolutely fine. Okay, thanks. Oh, hi, hi. I'm Susie. Uh oh. Hello. Hi. Yeah, bring the girls out. I'm Hetty. With either of them, so thought I'd give this a go. Right, <laughs> right. Greedy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? No. Yeah, just, uh, just about. <laughs> right. Okay, well, I think we should be control. getting on. Yeah. So, um, when the buzzer goes, girls, you move rooms and the guys will stay where they oh, are. Oh, greedy okay. bitch. Okay, and then at the end, we'll all meet back here for a drink and anyone who's really got on can make love their own arrangements. <laughs> of course, of course, yes. She is okay. horned up. Follow me. So, what do you do? You're a male model or something? Oh, well, yeah. Are you? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm a bit surprised that you haven't got a girlfriend already. Oh, well, a lot of the girls in my line of work are very shallow. 
Are they? You want someone that you just shag a couple times, have incredible, amazing sex with, and move on from, you know? <laughs> That's the thing I want. Looking for commitment, really. Me too. Really? Me all the time. Guess what? <laughs> My granddad won a Victoria Cross. No, no, he didn't. no. I probably made that. Yeah. When I was much younger, obviously. Oh, come on, you look pretty young to me. No, I don't. You do. Do I? Yeah, you do. Do I? You do. You do. I'm going to check out these other guys there, oh. haven't I? <laughs> I do that. Uh oh. Beating eggs. <laughs> What's next? <clears throat> oh, Jim. What are you doing there, man? What are you doing here? What do you think I do? What do you think? Too many buttons undone? Not enough? Well, tricky. Uh, I think she could have undone another one. Uh, you know, with, with the little cleavage a bit, you know. No, my buttons, Jim. What about my buttons? What about my cleavage? Well, I'm not really bothered now, I've seen it. I think you'll be really impressed by the next one. What I would call a real man. Oh, yummy. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Are all of them going to be here? Goodness. What in hell's hell are you doing here? <laughs> it sounded like my cup of tea. Lots of desperate women looking for love in a confined area. <laughs> be my special treat, isn't it? You know, meeting lots of exciting men. Time to move on, mercifully. What's that name on your lapel? Brad. 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 <laughs> okay. I thought it would make me sexier. Oh, you were so wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There are dig vets. Why? Well, I'm a single man. I thought to myself... I'd like what? to stay that way. No, I'd like to meet some women. And frighten them. <laughs> You're watching this How whole are you thing, getting dude. They're ruining this. Not great. This is supposed to be my birthday treat. Not. You may even find a do not disturb notice on the front of the vicarage tonight. <laughs> With some very naughty noises coming from within. Now that you started off with that lie. Someone will say, he's the one for me, and exactly the same person will say, she's the one for me. <laughs> oh, God. Tonight, the two of you, that dream has come true. So, Steve. Excuse me, just a moment. Of course, thank you. <laughs> Geraldine, now you. You are actually only tick Steve, uh, Dave, or Brad. Brad. Three such magnificent specimens. What more could a woman want? Well, I might want a man who wouldn't frighten me when he took his clothes off. <laughs> I might want a wedding ring and, and a baby. We thought you might like a baby. And since you can't get a man to give you one, we thought maybe Hugo could help you out. <laughs> and see, he is top quality stuff. <laughs> right. So obviously there is nothing sexual about it. Hugo doesn't find you remotely attractive. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry about the accent. Well, it's better than Mel's. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, lassie. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know what to say, really. <laughs> oh, no, they all came over. Nice. Be We're here as reserves. In case you don't fancy being impregnated by Hugo. <laughs> McNewitz. McTrot. McPickle. He's on and come back in ten minutes. I am not having this meeting with three randy Scotsmen on heat. We shall return. Oh, yeah. oh. She got a look for some sweaty ball sacks. <laughs> got a nice view. OK, 
okay. Some complications. Um, Owen, your idea of killing all the rich people in Britain and spreading their money around <laughs> has actually been done before in Russia in the last century. And whilst it seemed like quite a good idea at the time, it didn't turn out that well eventually. <laughs> and Jim, you very kindly offered to have some of the poorest people actually come and stay with you. It's the least I could do. Right, you've stipulated here you want anyone hungry and female and between the ages of 16 and 22. Oh, my God. Preferably of oriental extraction. <laughs> that's right. No, Jim, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. Finally, uh, Frank, interesting one from you. You suggested that oh, we all dear. follow the example of Jan Palak. Who's that? And all in favour of just Frank doing it on his own. <laughs> okay. Is it David Hurts? Excellent. So that is, in fact, a possibility. <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm, but while we're refining those ideas, let's commit to a couple of simple things. Yeah, there you go, like that and that, you know. I got one of these flicky things on the front of Pony magazine. <laughs> We're thinking that you could wear them as an armband or a bracelet, you know, to show your support. Well, that's a bit of a come down, isn't it? One minute I'm offering to commit mass murder. And the problem of poverty once and for all. Oh, that chance of that, I couldn't even crack Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Do you know, I'm getting a distinct feeling of non-commitment in this room. And severe pain to anybody who talks during this. Well, can we whisper really quietly? Oh! I did warn you, Owen. Right, can everyone see? I was like, oh, I probably like that okay, a little bit. Okay, here we go. This is weird. You're right, this sort of thing won't do at all. Will it? No. No. No longer. Thanks. Suddenly, out of nowhere... man that was a, a depressing uh like sad ending man well i mean not just depressing it was uplifting as well that people were like talking about serious issues and everything i know this is a, a while ago but i've definitely gotten much better with watching old like not old what i'm talking about but i've seen them for so long all those commercials stuff coming on when people were like, like kids and stuff are sick and dogs and cats and all those uh videos like riot aid all that stuff in regards to like um, collecting uh, money to like help out those uh, situations they will ruin my entire day and I think that's what they're supposed to do you're supposed to be very they're supposed to impact you so much where you think about it non-stop and they, that's what they used to do for me so they used to work I know some people they don't work on like they look at like oh, I don't care about that to turn the channel they used to work on me man like I would be sad like for the entire day but because I was poor too it was like I couldn't do anything I didn't have any money to do anything about it when I used to see a lot of this stuff when I was like younger like when I, I forgot the guy's name but he would like for like I think he said like for like 20 cents a day you could feed this child I forgot his name but I remember I used to see those commercials when I was like younger I don't know. I hate getting into it because whenever you talk about this stuff, there's always people who show up and start saying, like, you know, a lot of these places you donate to are just corrupt and they steal like 90% of the money, right? Uh, a lot of the people who like come up with these things, they just take a lot. I'm like, I know a lot of this stuff happens, man. I, it is what it is. So I don't want to, I don't want to go into it. But yeah, overall, man, I really enjoyed this episode. This was very, very fun stuff, man. I felt bad that she didn't get the opportunity, at least I guess, get some from old boy. But I was wondering if he was going to catch her in that lie, if they're going to maybe go out to dinner or something. He's going to catch her in a lie, and it was just going to be botched. That's why I was wondering what was going to happen with the whole thing. Then I was like, you know what? I really think... 
there's a chance he's gonna leave with that blind girl and he would just land it on thick for the date you know with her he just like he's just one of those guys who just talks a big game with any woman he's sent down with because he's a player he knows exactly what to say he don't know who he's gonna get so each girl he sits down with he's gonna just play his cards right because the next girl he might get with he's like oh, i don't like her i want to play my cards right with every girl in case you know because i want to go home with somebody and yeah and i was thinking that like wait a minute this dude might just plan the game that's the way you got to do it play the game to make sure you go home uh to get you some booty from somebody but yeah when she was rocking that thing like it looks like she's wearing like a fancy vicar outfit that's just all it looked like to me it didn't seem like she was dressing too fancy glad she dolled herself up a little while pulling the thing off the lady was right about that i was like she's lady being a bit weird and horny to my hickeys and all that jazz but she did the right thing telling her to take that thing off it was it just looked like a vicar outfit with some frills you know, it's kind of funky. But yeah, man, this is, this is good stuff. I didn't know what she was talking about when she brought uh him over, tell him to be like Mel Gibson, but there's going to be no sex, but he's going to like, I guess, give you a baby. You're like, what are you, artificial insemination? What are you guys talking about, you weirdos? So freaking strange. It definitely makes sense now why they didn't they did the joke in the beginning because they didn't want to take away from the message they're trying to put out, man, and with the, like, you know, feed the children and all that, man. It definitely ruined her birthday by showing up, but I was thinking about that too, like, if they didn't show up, it would have been just three people. So it may have seemed like they ruined it, but they were supportive. They were being supportive being there because it would have kind of sucked if it was just her sitting there with an old boy and then after that, no other guys. And then she just stood there alone, sad while they walked away. That would have been terrible. So luckily they did show up. That was, if you really think about it, that's very sweet. They did, you know? But all right, folks, that is it. That is all for this one. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. See you in the next one. Later.